The following is a presentation of Retro Sports Network, home of the champions of the past, present, and or future, presented by Sports Simulations and Replays, the Facebook group that needs you, whether you are doing a tabletop, a console, or a uh, PC replay or preplay or what if sports simulations and replays is the place to go on Facebook to post your project. 982 members strong. We need 18 for a thousand. That's sports simulations and replays on Facebook. So Friday night at little old Fenway Park. California came in to invade a big, big week for the Angels. They've got Detroit. We'll see them on Tuesday. And then over the weekend, they go to Milwaukee. So the, you're going to see a lot of the Angels as they try to claim the American League West. Last night against the Sox, Rod Carew singled in the first to make it one nothing. He scored Brian Downing. Then Doug DeSensei doubled home Carew to make it 2 nothing. California. In the third, Doug DeSensei doubled home Reggie Jackson to make it 3 nothing. And then Don Baylor singled home DeSensei to make it 4 nothing. Uh, Dwight Evans doubled to score. Rick Miller made it 4-1. to one. But Rick Steirer and Doug Corbett did the yeoman's work. They combined to keep the Red Sox down 4-1. to one. Brian Denman, and that's a name you really need to be a Red Sox fan to remember, goes the distance to go 0-2. The Angels have a five-game lead in the American League West. As Retro Sports Network presents from Fenway Park in Boston, Massachusetts. Major League Baseball Replay 1982. It is the California Angels with Mike Witt against Boston Red Sox and John Tudor for August 28th, 1982. A warm, windy afternoon on the back bay. Why, good evening. I'm Ron Juckett, and glad to have you along for the Angels and the Red Sox as we complete the last game we're going to see from August 1982 in this replay. The Angels have a five-game lead over Kansas City, eight and a half over the White Sox. While the Red Sox might be one of the bigger disappointments in this replay, they contended for most of the year. They won 89 games. They didn't win, obviously, but in the replay... The bullpen just didn't do what it shouldn't, and the starters are just not good. You see John Tudor, he is 7-11 on the year with an ERA of close to 5. They are 59-68. and 68. They get a token appearance, all bad against the Red Sox. And so, but the Angels, if they can do well on this road trip, they might, just might, be able to put a stranglehold on things in the American League West. And so we say hello to Tribe Fan. How are you? Good to have you along on this Saturday night. Now let's take a look at the standings. Philadelphia has kind of made things interesting. Montreal starting to come back to earth in the National League East. The lead is six and a half. The magic number is 29. Not time to panic yet, of course, for the Expo. But the Phillies are le good. Pittsburgh is 13 back. The Mets already have their golf reservation set. In the West, it's still Los Angeles. They've won four straight. They've won 86 on the year. They lead Atlanta by 16 games, and their magic number is 19. In the East, well, you know, Boston's 14 and a half back, and Pickies could fly. They've lost their last two. In the But Baltimore has won their last three. They're 5-5 five and five in their last 10, and they hold a scant half-game lead over the Tigers. Milwaukee is two back. And in the West, well, here's the story. California have won six of ten. They've won two straight. They are only 29 and 30, however, on the road. But that's good enough. They lead Kansas City by five. The Royals have lost three straight. And the White Sox have kind of stumbled to eight back. So, that's the scene set for you. John Tudor on the hill. How you doing, Al Red Sox? I think we're doing a chat with Al tonight, too. John Tudor on the hill. He is 7-11, which is not good luck for the Red Sox pitcher. 
and an ERA of 496. This is his 24th start of the year. He's 2-0 in August with a 294 ERA. His last time out, six innings against the Mariners on the 23rd. Eight hits, a run, it was earned. He didn't walk anybody. Struck out three, 152 in the third innings overall, 178 hits. 20 homers, 84 or 91 runs, 84 earned. He's walked 47, struck out 102, and is ready to go to Pittsburgh. Come on. So for the lineup for the Angels, Brian Downing leads off and left. Rod Carew will bat second and play first. Doug DeCense is at third. He'll bat third. Don Baylor, the DH. He'll clean up Juan Beniquez, not Reggie Jackson in right field. He'll bat fifth. Clark, the center fielder, will go sixth. Bobby Gritch will play second and bat seventh. Tim Foley, the shortstop, bats eighth. And Bob Boone will bat ninth. And Mike Witt is on the mound. Defensively for Boston, Jim Rice is in left. Reed Nichols is in center. He's a five and an eight. Dwight Evans is a ten. This picture is just terrible. A ten in right, and I don't know the arm. Carney Lansford is at third. He's a five. He went from the Angels to the Red Sox. And then when Wade Boggs stole that position, he went to the Oakland A's. Dave Stapleton is at short. He's a four. Jerry Remy is a five at second. Wade Boggs, you know that name. He's a seven at first. And Gary Allenson behind the plate. He's a five and an eight for Tudor. So downing at 273. 27 homers. 66 RBI. Randy, how are you? Red Sox going? Okay. They're playing the doubleheader with the race tonight. Yep. Hoping for the split. Downing's ready. Tudor's ready. Hope you're ready. And Downing pops this one up. Balanson takes off the mask. And there's one out. He actually had to go back to the screen. So R Jim Rice, by the way, is a 6 and a 5 in left. And Dewey is a 10 and a 5. Eight in right. Rod Carew at 329, three homers and 35 RBI. Yanks lose to Cleveland again. Oh, breaks my poor heart. Pitch to Carew is a ground ball to Remy on the grass over to Boggs for the second out. So good start for Tudor. And now I'll bring up Doug the Sensei at 325, 24 homers and 82 RBI. Tudor deals, ball four. So I've jinxed Tudor. And that brings up Don Baylor, the future Red Sox at 273, 25 homers, and 94 RBI. He's already exceeded his real life total. Game 129 for the Angels, game 128 for the Red Sox. Pitch to Baylor. Line drive to Stapleton at short, and that will retire the side. No runs, no hits, no errors. Half an inning in the books at the Old Fenway. California, nothing. Here come the Sox. So Mike Witt having himself a marvelous year. 2.53 the ERA. This is start number 21 for him. He is 13-5 and five with the save. He went against the Red Sox 10 days ago in Anaheim. Six innings, seven hits, two runs, both earned. He walked two and struck out three. He took the loss that day, by the way. He did beat the Brewers, however, his last time out five days ago. Nine innings of a complete game at home. Five hits, a run it was earned. He walked two. So on the year... 142 in the third innings, 121 hits, 6 home runs, 42 total runs, 40 earned, he's walked 41 and struck out 71. And if the Angels take care of business, he's probably going to be a Game 1 or Game 2 starter in the American League Championship Series. Jerry Remy at 294, no homers and 32 RBI. Dwight Evans bats second. Jimmy Rice will go third. Carl Yastrzemski, the DH, cleans up. Carney Lansford at third will bat fifth. Wade Boggs will bat sixth. Didn't do that too often. Reed Nichols will bat seventh because Dave Stapleton in his 199 bats eighth. And Gary Allenson, who doesn't have a bat, will bat ninth. Defensively, 
It's Downing in left. Clark a two and a five in center, and Benitez a two, and we'll figure out the arm in a minute. And right, DeSense a good glove at third. He's a nine. Foley a six at short. Rich is seven at second. Carew is seven at first, and Boone a ten behind the plate. So Witt's ready, and so is Remy. Here's the pitch, and there's a little ground ball to DeSense, a long throw to Carew for the out. So downing a six and a three and left, Benitez a two and a five and right. Not a great defense for the Angels, but would you believe they are third in the American League in defense? Third in ERA and second in batting average? I mean, this team is stacked. Here's Dwight Evans. 267, 25 homers and 77 RBI. Already has 100 runs scored. Witt delivers. And there's a base hit left center field. Evans will turn but hold. The Sensei should have had that. And Downing it fires it back in. So first hit of the ball game belongs to Boston. Here's Jim Rice at 276. 17 homers and 70 RBI. Now the Twins just are in such good shape in the AL Central. But the Indians could contend for a wild card and that might uh, forestall the fire sale that some see for them. Rice has got a nine game hitting streak going. Pinch from Witt. Ground ball to third. To Sensei to Gritch for a one. Over to Carew. Call it two. I think. Yes sir. No runs to hit and no errors. After one, California and Boston Scoreless at Fenway, which was the prequel to Sleepless in Seattle. No, no, it wasn't. Juan Benitez, Clark, and Gritch. Benitez at 305 with six RBI. Tudor deals, and Benitez slaps that one to Boggs at first, takes it himself on the way. Bobby Clark at 326, a homer, and four RBI. Tudor deals. Clark strikes out. Tudor got him to miss on an 0-2 pitch. And Allenson had to fish around for it and just tagged him. So two out for, I guess, you know, it's a year-long slump for Gritch. 2-19, 14 homers, and 72 RBI. Pitch to Bobby. Liner to left center. That's going to grab the monster. Gritch is going for two. And he's in there. So that hit low on the wall. Rice fielded it, fielded it and had a good throw in. But Gritch does have decent speed. And so the Angels have a two-out double for Timmy Foley. At 244, two homers and 43 RBI. Tudor deals. Foley right back to John. Over to Wade Boggs. And that will retire the side. Angels get a hit and leave him on second. After an inning and a half. It's the Angels nothing, the Red Sox nothing. And here comes Captain Carl. I think this is the first time, maybe, all year. Oops, as I re scooch. That, I've, that we've had the Red Sox on. They've just played so poorly. So Yastrzemski at 264. Eight homers and 53 RBI. Witt threw 11 pitches in the first. Deals, and there's a ground ball to Gritch. Over to Carew, what away. Randy's watching two games at Fenway at the same time. That is a neat trick. 37, or 36 and a half years apart, too. The time machine is in a vortex of a flux, I guess. So, drive, you know, go walk to your DeLorean fridge and get yourself a good drink. Here's Carney Lansford, 265, five homers and 43 RBI. Weird not him not paying on the Angels at this point. Pitch to Carnage is a fly ball to center. Clark moves to his right for the out, two away. So here's the rookie, Wade Boggs. 368, three homers and 27 RBI. Witt deals. Fly ball to right. Benitez goes way back there, and he'll turn and watch it go. A monster shot over the bullpens, 
And the Red Sox draw first blood. I guess that was down the line. So Wade Boggs, with his fourth of the year, makes a 1-0 Boston. Here it is again. Boggs did have deceptive power. And he powered that one for a solo shot. And the Red Sox make the rest of the AL West happy 1-0. Brings up Reed Nichols, 244. Six homers and 24 RBI. Witt, 81 degrees. Wind blowing left to right at 15, so Boggs had some help. Pitch from Mike. Ground ball right back to the pitcher over to Carew for the out. So the Red Sox score first. A run on a hit. The solo shot by Boggs after two. Boston one, California nothing. So Boone downing in Carew to start the third. Boone. 235, six homers and 40 RBI. Tudor starts the third. Here's the pitch. Liner right to Remy, who makes a diving stop one away. So Tudor, 41 pitches through nine batters. Two and a third innings, a hit. A walk and a strikeout. That's right. Wade Boggs' 3,000th hit was a homer for Tampa. Talk about a guy looking in the wrong, no offense, Randy, in the wrong uniform after all the years of being in Boston or New York. Now, Boggs is from Tampa, so it's not that unusual. And it was the Rays, Devil Rays first year, but it just didn't look right. Downing is 0 for 1. Pitch from Tudor, ball 4. And Tribe Fan reminds us that it came off of Chris Haney of the Indians. Rod Carew is 0 for 1. So runner on first, one out. Boggs and Lansford play for the bunt. Pitch from Tudor. There's a base hit in the right center field. Evans will pick it up. Downing will hold it second. And the Angels have runners on first and second with one out for Doug DeSense, who walked his first time. So Downing on second, Carew on first. And the Angels threatening here in the top of the third. One out. They trail one nothing. Tudor deals. Line drive to Stapleton. Quick throw to Boggs. And Carew is doubled off. Ho, ho, ho. So a heads up play by Stapleton. Score that one. 6-6-3. Six, six, no runs a hit. No errors. Two and a half in the books. Boston one. California nothing. Raise the bases loaded down three to one in real life. Stapleton at 199, six homers in 49 RBI. Looks rather early 80s in that picture, doesn't it? Nice old bushy hair and mustache. Witt delivers, and that's right back to the pitcher over to Peru for the out. One away. Brings up Gary Allenson. Gary with the uh, porn stash smile on that picture. 188, so he wasn't scoring in those movies or at the plate. A homer and 15 RBI. Witt deals, and Allenson proves me wrong. He sends that one in the right for a single. <laughs> oh, well. Somewhere, Alan Trammell stares at his screen and glares. So I'll bring up Jerry Remy, who's 0 for 1. Witt through 9 batters, 2 in the 3rd innings, 3 hits. The 1 run, the solo shot by Boggs. Didn't walk or strike out anybody, including Jerry Remy. Who grounded out to DeSensei to start the game. Runner on first, 1 out. Witt deals, and Remy sends this one into right center. Clark cuts it off. And Allenson... Will hold at second. So the Red Sox have four hits. One of them is single by Dwight Evans, his first time up. Pitch from Witt. And Dewey sends this one into left center field. That's a single. Picked up by Downing, and Allenson will hold at third. So the bases are loaded for Jim Rice, who I didn't notice grunted into a double play his first time up. So Allenson on third, Remy on second. And Evans on first. And Jimmy sitting on a nine-game hitting streak. one nothing Boston, bottom of the third. Witt's pitch struck him out. 
A 2-2 pitch swung on and missed for strike three. First strikeout for Witt. And with two out, brings up Carl Yastrzemski, who's 0 for 1. The captain at 263. Pitch from Witt. Up the middle, Foley by the bag at second, runs to cover the base and gets Dwight Evans on the fours. The Red Sox do what they always did back in the early 80s, make me drink lighter flute. No, no runs, three hits, no errors. After three, Boston leaves them loaded, still one nothing Sox. Baylor, Benitez, and Clark to face John Tudor here in the fourth. Tribe fan reminds us that wasn't the first time the Indians have given up, given up a 3,000 pit. The other one that he can remember was when Jose Mesa gave up Robin, as a starter, gave up Robin Young's 3,000. Probably if you were to quiz people about people after 1950 uh, getting their 3,000 pit, I, would, I wonder how many would actually get, mention Young. All right, Al's listening as he's going to go help out his dad. Baylor's 0 for 1. Tudor pitches. Ground ball to Lansford. Long throw to Boggs is not in time. Lansford got a late jump on it. And that's a hit. So the third hit for the Angels. And that brings up Juan Badikas who's 0 for 1. Tudor's pitch, and there's a ground ball to short. Should be two. Stapleton to Remy for one. Over to Boggs. Call it two. So that is the pitcher's best friend. I feel like I should be doing ads for Ricola after saying that. Double play. Bobby Clark is 0 for 1. He has struck out. And anyone who scans through the highlights on demand is going to hear that going, what are you doing? He struck out his first time up, and Tudor got him again. Swung on and tipped in the glove of Allenson, and that will retire the side. No runs a hit, no errors. Doesn't do anything after three and a half. It's the Red Sox one, the Angels nothing. So it'll be Lansford, Boggs, and Nichols for Boston here in the bottom of the fourth. Carney's 0 for 1. Witt delivers, and there's a chopper to Gritch deep in the hole over to Carew for the out. So if you're watching and not chatting, say hi in the chat. We'd love to have you along. Wayne Boggs, solo shot down the corner and right. Four now for Boggs on the year with 28 RBI. He is one for one. Pitch from Witt. There's a ground ball to a Long throw to Carew, and there's two out. So Witt chugging right along now here in the bottom of the fourth. Reed Nichols, pretty good utility outfielder for his day. 0 for 1. Pitch from Witt. And there's a base hit in the left. Downing will get it. And that's a two-out single. Sixth hit for the Red Sox. Dave Stapleton, who should have been on first in a certain night in October in 1986, is at the plate. Just saying. He's 0 for 1. Witt, ground ball, left side, base hit. Nichols goes to third. Stapleton will hold it first. And Gary Allenson, who singled his first time up, is at the plate. Boston has runners in the corners. Seven hits for the Sox, three for the Angels, but it's only 1 nothing. Boston, two out here in the bottom of the fourth. Pitch from Witt. Allenson draws ball four, so you couldn't have asked for a better game for Allenson. And that'll flip the lineup, and here's Jerry Remy. Jerry, one for two with a single. So Witt threw 80, 18 batters, 65 pitches, three and a two-thirds inning, seven hits. The homer by Boggs, a walk and a strikeout, and right now that's the only run. But Nichols on third. Stapleton on second, who might try to score on a single. And Allenson on first. Witt's pitch. Got him. He swung on and missed, and the Sox go down. They leave him loaded again. No runs, two hits, no errors. My childhood comes back to haunt me again. After four, Boston won. 
California nothing. The Red Sox leave them loaded. Again. Good thing my counselor's coming Monday. Here's Bobby Critch, Tim Foley, and Bob Boone to bat. Tuner at 67 pitches through four. Gritch doubled and could not score his first time up. Tudor deals, ball four. So Gritch is on with a walk, and no, Steve Christmas is not on the Red Sox bench. Sorry, Demos. Tim Foley's 0 for 1. Tudor hits the sign and deals. There's a liner that's going to fall in front of Rice and left, and so the Angels have runners on first and second. Nobody out here in the fifth. Dave Gardner, how are you? Nice to have you along. One nothing Red Sox. Wade Boggs solo shot in the second, then they left him loaded in the third and the fourth. Pitch to Boone is 0 for 1. Ground ball to Boggs, takes it to the bag himself at first, and Boone is retired. So Gritch and Foley move up 90. And with one out, John Tudor threw 18 batters, 77 pitches. Four and a third innings, which is good. Four hits, he's walked three and struck out two. John Tudor, not known for being a jocular person, or at least as a player. This Connecticut New York native was said to have the personality in his time in Boston of a Massachusetts State Trooper. Which I'm sure some of you can attest to is not someone you're going to rush out to have a beer and tell a couple jokes with. Downing is 0 for 1, he's going to walk. Tudor delivers, and there's a liner in the left that's going to drop. Gritch will score. Foley is held at third, and we got ourselves a tie at one. So it brings up Rod Carew, one for two. Foley on third, Downing on first. One out. Tudor's pitch, fly ball to right. That should score Foley. Evans moves over into the alley to get it. Foley will tag and score. And it's 2-1 to one California with two out now. So sack fly, sack fly, sack nine. Doug DeSensei is walked in his 0 for 1. Runner on first. Tudor delivers. Down and goes. Liner to Stapleton and that will retire the side. Halfway home. Two runs, two hits, and no errors. It's the Angels who pop up on top. 2-1. to one. Come on. There we go. So the Bog solo shot in the second. The Red Sox load the bases in the third and fourth. And cannot score. So that's the in-game box score. Tudor has pitched well. The Red Sox have seven hits and just stop it, stop it. They've left ten on. We'll see how long Tudor can go. Witt has just given up the one run, the solo shot to Boggs. As we start, the bottom of the fifth, Evans, Rice, and Yastrzemski. Dewey, two for two, he's single twice. Pitch from Witt to start the bottom of the fifth, base hit right field. So Evans is now three for three, and that'll bring up Jim Rice, who has struck out and grounded into a double play. He's 0 for 2. So Witt hopes to have lightning strike twice. Here's the pitch. Rice pops this one up. Right side. Carew on the grass. One away. Yastrzemski is 0 for 2. Captain Carl. How is my, how is my favorite pusher? Got more stuff for you, Dave. <laughs> Let me show you this game. <laughs> Pitch from Witt. Yaz, ground ball to second. He'll ground him in the 4-6-3. Foley to Carew. And the Red Sox do what the Red Sox did. After five, no runs, one hit, no errors. California 2, Boston 1. Not, you know, I'm glad to know once in a while... You know, sometimes your childhood memories could be clouded, sometimes by good things, and sometimes by bad things in a simplistic sense. After doing two Red Sox games this week, you know, we did the 
a 87 game for the Patre for Patreon for for baseball demos, and this lovely display they're putting on. I'm learning to realize that those childhood memories were just as crappy as I thought they were. Just putting it out there. Don Baylor one for two. He's got himself the single. Tudor delivers, and there's a liner to Lansford, one away. Nice snare. Brings up Juan Benitez, who's 0 for 2. Grounded into a double play. Tudor, 100 pitches. Base hit up the middle, and Benitez is on. Stapleton should have had that. And so one out, one on for Clark, who was yet to make contact. He's 0 for 2. Throw to first, Benitez is back. And now Tudor will concentrate on Clark. Fly ball, center field. Nichols has it for the out. So two out for Bobby Gritch, who has walked, doubled, and scored. That came in the fifth. He walked and scored in the fifth, doubled in the second. Tudor's pitch. Gritch lines this one to left. Rice is there. And that will retire the side. No runs, a hit, no errors. Five and a half down. It's the Angels two, the Red Sox one. So Lansford, Boggs, and Nichols, and if anyone should reach Stapleton, here in the sixth. And as far as I know, the old airport in Denver is not named after Dave. Lansford's 0 for 2. Strikes out. Throw down to Carew is in time. Boone dropped the strike three after Lansford swung on and missed. And so that's three for Witt and one away. For Boggs, who had that solo shot down the line and right in the second. That was the lone Red Sox run. Pitch from Witt. And Boggs slaps that one into right field. Benitez will pick it up. And that's the ninth hit of the ball game. Brings up Nichols. Dave Little, how are you? Glad to have you along on this Saturday night. Chat with Al. We expect to have happen this evening. Watch for that. Reed Nichols is one for two. Witt deals, and he sends that one into right field. Benitez picks it up off a hop. Boggs flirts with going to third, but there was a side of beef and not a bucket of chicken, so he'll stay at second. So Boggs on second, Nichols on first, for Stapleton, who is one for two. Speaking of Dave Little, uh, baseball tomorrow, courtesy of him, on this channel, four o'clock Eastern, the National League final of that 70s tournament, the 73 Mets and the 79 Pittsburgh Pirates with my cat singing We Are Family sometime along the way from Three Rivers. First pitch about four o'clock right here on Retro Sports Network. That's 4 o'clock Eastern, 3 Central, 1 Pacific. And I think we are five hours ahead of Hawaii, so 11 of those whose bodies have not adjusted yet to being back in the Continental 48. Pitch to Stapleton coming after Boone and Witten have a conversation. Stapleton chops one up the middle, Foley to Critch for one, over to Carew. Double play again. No runs, two hits, no errors. After six, California two, Boston one. Tim Foley is one for two. John Tudor probably his last inning. Bob Boone and Brian Downing to follow. California two runs, six hits, no errors. They've left five on. The Red Sox... One run, ten hits, and no errors, and they've left seven on. And hitting to 17,000 double plays. Pitch to Foley. Popped up right side. Boggs. That was a rainmaker, and he caught it. So one away for Bob Boone. It's 0 for 2. Tudor deals. And there's a base hit in the right center. That kind of got caught between Remy and Evans in the no man's land. And so that's a one-out single for Downing. So through 27 batters, Mr. Tudor at six and a third inning, seven hits. The two runs both earned. He's walked three and struck out two. 
Downing one for two with an RBI, a single and a walk. Tudor and Allenson have a few words. And then Downing slaps that one up the middle for a single. Boone will hold it second. And with one out, here's Rod Carew. One for two, single and an RBI. Fantomatic, how are you? Oh, really? I didn't know that. Uh, Ice Street, or did I miss that in, in your league? That's cool. John Tudor plays at Hockey Town in a certain place in Massachusetts. I won't mention because we don't need to have him hounded. Anyway, got Carew on a 3-2 pitch. Carew was a good runner, and Carew wanted something to drive, and Tudor just didn't give him to him. And that's three, and that'll bring up Doug Sensei, and that will bring a pitching change. So out comes Tudor. In comes... Bob Stanley. We got ourselves a pitching change. This game is coming to you from Fenway Park in Boston. And so Bob Stanley, nice stash. I forgot about that. Making his 37th relief appearance of the year. Will not get the innings that he needs. Probably because his ERA is 384. Although against the Angels last or two, Thursday, through three innings, he allowed three hits. A run it was not earned. Did not walk anybody, didn't strike out anybody, and hopefully didn't give up a home run. In 79 and two-thirds innings, he's allowed 83 hits, six dingers, 39 runs, 34 earned, 28 walks, 37 strikeouts. He picked up the win against the Angels. How about that? So the Red Sox pen is rested because Denman took the complete game loss last night. DeSense is 0 for 2 with a walk. Over 50 league, okay. Yeah, Tudor, as I said, uh, personality of a Massachusetts street, street, state trooper, from what I understand. Boone on second, two out. Downing on first. DeSensei flies one to left. Rice will come in and make the catch in the corner. So that's it. And so in this case, Stanley helps you do things right. Andy Hassler coming in for Mike Witt here in the bottom of the seventh. Stretch time here at the Fens. California two. Boston won. And again, here's the obligatory pitch for Patreon. I'd like to thank all of my Patreons, uh, patrons for your donations, including Dale Lonsdale, Bobby Cardellano, Al Red Sox fan, Dave Little. You know who you are. If you want to join the group, it's patreon.com slash retrosportsnetwork. $5 gets your name mentioned a $5 pledge gets your game mentioned on the channel. $10 gets any game you want played. Stay tuned in the next couple days as we introduce our next Patreon project. That's patreon.com slash retrosportsnetwork. The wind is now howling out to left center field. There's a jet stream for a left-handed or for a right-handed hitter at 16 miles an hour. Hassler at four and six on the year. He used to pitch for the Red Sox. I think this was before 70 or 82. A 390 ERA, four and six with two saves. His last appearance, oh, it was a double header against the Red Sox on Thursday. It's five game series, then, I think. Uh, in game one, he went in third of an inning, allowed two hits. And in game two, went an inning and two-thirds with one hit. So 60 innings in total, 62 hits. Six home runs, 27 earned. 27 in total, 26 earned. He's walked 29 and struck out 28. And if you want to play those four numbers as the Powerball, I wouldn't recommend it. So Hassler, the lefty, faces the righty Allenson. Maybe not. Allenson does not hit lefties well at all. And so it's going to be 
Tony Perez pinch hitting. Tony at 239. Five homers and 30 RBIs. We start at the bottom of the seventh. Pitch to Perez is a liner that's going to go to the wall and left. Going for two. The Sensei trying to dive and should have got it. And instead it rolled all the way to the 10. And Perez has himself a pinch hit stand up double. So brings up Jerry Remy, who was one for three with a strikeout. Angels play for the bunt. Remy's going to do it. It's down, and nobody's going to get anybody. Boone tried to pick it up, but he dropped it. It needed a handle, and Boone couldn't find it. It goes down as an E2, and the Red Sox have the tying run at third with nobody out. For Dwight Evans, who was three for three today, he is singled three times. So the Red Sox are in business here in the bottom of the seventh. Baylor... Beniquez and Clark for the Angels in the eighth. Pitch from Hassler. Evans sends this one to the wall and left. That'll score Perez. Here comes Remy. He rounds third. The throw from Foley's going to be close. Safe! So again, DeSensei did not make the play. Evans with a double and two runs score, and the Red Sox go up three to two. So Remy dove for the plate, Boone with the tag, and it was not in time. It's 3-2 to two Boston. So Hassler has come in and choked away the lead. Here's Rice, he's 0 for 3. He has struck out and grounded into a double play. Evans on second. And there's a base hit into right. Benitez will pick it up. And Evans is held at third. So runners in the corners, nobody out. A small explosion here for Boston. Here's Yastrzemski. Carl is 0 for 3 and grounded into a double play. Hassler deals. Struck him out. He swung on and missed on a 1-2 pitch for strike 3. So one away for Lansford. Carney is 0 for 3 with a strikeout. How you doing, Dale Lonsdale? Hassler deals, popped up, second base, Gritch, two out. For Wade Boggs, who was two for three. Solo shot in the second, single in the sixth. MP Fox, how you doing? Yeah, you made it before the ninth inning, and we are having a great night. Thanks for joining us. 3-2 to two Boston, 7th inning. They got 2 in the 7th. The Angels got 2 in the 5th. So Stanley and Hassler are the pitchers of record. And Hassler has struggled. Pitch to Bart. Well, you know, Boone and Hassler. Boone's given Hassler some business, and Andy delivers, and Boggs draws a walk. And that brings up Reed Nichols, who is 2 for 3. He is single twice. So, Wade Boggs with a solo shot in the second. Red Sox loaded the bases in the third and the fourth and could not score. And got me to talk about my childhood. California drove on two in the fifth. And the Red Sox have plated two here in the seventh. Boone and Hassler talk again. Crowd doesn't like it. Base is loaded. Pitch to Nichols. Base hit up the middle. Evans will score. Here comes Rice. Clark is going to throw home, and Rice scores. So there was a tag, a pile of dirt, and the fifth Boston run. It's now 5-2 to two Boston. So Boggs on second. Nichols now with two RBI is on first. And here's Dave Stapleton, one for three. Sun Golden grounded into a double play. Pitch from Hassler. Gets away from Boone, and everybody moves up 90. On the wild pitch. So Andy Hassler's having the five-year-old in the haunted house type game. Two-thirds of an inning, four hits. Only one earned run, but five of four across the plate. Pitch to Stapleton. This should end the inning. Fly ball to center. Clark is there. 
and that will retire the side. Not before the Red Sox get four runs on four hits and no air. One air after seven. Boston five, California two. So Don Baylor, Juan Benitez, and Bobby Clark to face Stanley. Rich Gedman will come in the game. He's a five and a three behind the plate. Baylor one for three. Stanley retired his lone batter in the top of the seventh. And Baylor lines out one to Stapleton, one away. Yeah, MP Lerla. <laughs> that would be a Don Baylor rally lead to lead off getting flunked. Yep, the irony of ironies would be Stanley getting the win after all the stuff we talked about last week. He's still the pitching coach for Portland on the double for the double A Red Sox. Benitez is one for three. Juan grounds that one to Remy. DeBoggs at first for the out. He should have leaned in. He did enough. Bobby Clark, 0 for 3, has struck out twice. Stanley cruising along now, 3 up, 3 down. And Fred Little pinch it. And every time that Freddie Lynn played against the Red Sox, hearts just melted just a little bit. Freddie at 299, 16 homers, 74 RBI, sat because John Tudor started the game. And so that was a platoon. With Clark. Pitch from Stanley. Lynn strikes out. A no two pitch at the belt. No runs, no hits, no errors. Seven and a half in the books. Red Sox five, Angels two. Luis Sanchez coming in to pitch for the Angels. Lynn goes in the center. He's a seven and a five. No, never did. Baseball didn't survive after Plunk and Don Baylor. So Sanchez making relief appearance number 35. Three and four on the year. Four saves. A 3-9-1 ERA. Has struggled in August. His last time out against Detroit, he scuffled a week ago Sunday. Two-thirds of an inning. Five hits. Three runs. All earned. He didn't walk or strike out anybody. 53 innings, 63 hits, a dinger. 25 runs, 23 earned. He's walked 13 and struck out 45. And how much did that three earned runs hurt? It brought his E, took the loss. Brought his ERA up from 344 to 391. It'll be Gedman, Remy, and Evans here in the eighth. Gedman at 272, two homers and 24 RBI. First time up, Sanchez's pitch. Base hit up the middle. Foley should have had it, and the Red Sox have their 15th hit of the game. Two runs, eight hits, and an error for the Angels. They've left seven on. The Red Sox, five runs, 15 hits, and no errors, and they've left nine on. Here's Remy. He is one for three. He has struck out, singled, and scored. Yep. Lots of talk about hit batsmen, and if they got plunked by Eric, that would be good. Not only Dale did his, did um, Biggio, one of Biggio's kids got drafted, one of them just hit a home run for the Blue Jays. So here's Remy, he's one for three. Gedman on first, and Remy signs this one into right field. Benitez picks it up, and the Red Sox are in business again. Gedman on second, Remy on first for Dwight Evans. He's got two RBI. That came on a double in the seventh. Four for four. Three singles, a run scored. Sanchez deals, and there's a ground ball to third. Should be two. Desense takes it to one for at third over to Carew, and they did not get him. So Desense might have made an error in judgment. They get the, the force at third and Gedman. But he did not go around the horn, and Edmund, or Evans beat out the throw. 
So it's still first and second and one out for Rice, who is one for four. Scored, struck out, and of course, grounded into a double play. Sanchez delivers. This will not be a GIDP fly ball to left center. Back goes Lynn to the track, makes the catch. Remy tags and goes to third. And so now runners in the corners and two outs for Yaz, who is 0 for 4 with a strikeout. I'm on time for the month collapse of 82. Well, California's in great shape. And Dave Little is right. Biggio is not in the same class of... Oh, is it Ron Hunt? That guy hit 50 times in a year. That's true. Robinson was the man. Hung in there with the likes of Gibson and Drysdale who'd hit their mother if they could. They dug in at the plate. Yastrzemski digs in. Remy on third. Evans on first. 5-2 Boston. Sanchez delivers, and yeah, sends this one into left center. Remy will score. Evans holds at second, and maybe, just maybe, they're going. Red Sox will win this game. Lansford is 0 for 4 with a strikeout. So Carnage is ready. Sanchez again, not having himself a great day. Pitch, fly ball to left. Down and goes back. Makes the catch in front of the scoreboard, and that will retire the side. A run on three hits and no errors. We go to the top of the ninth. Bob Stanley, the steamers going for the win. Boston 6, California 2. Gritch, Foley, and Boone do up for the Angels. So Bobby is 1 for 2. He is walked, doubled, and scored. That came in the fifth. That's true, Dave Little says. Robinson's revenge was to take you out of the yard. And he did that a plenty. Pitch to Gritch. Right back to the steamer. Over to Boggs. One out. So Stanley loves those grounders, and he induced one there with the palm ball. Here's Timmy Foley. One for three. A single and scored the other run in the fifth. Yes, you already used that pun. We don't recycle puns. Pitch to Foley. Ground ball to Remy. Over to Boggs, and there's two out. So Stanley has limited time to watch this. Last chance saloon for the Angels, and it's Bob Boone, who's one for three with a single. So the Red Sox, with a win, would go to 60 and 68. And the Angels' lead for the moment would be trimmed to four and a half games. Stanley delivers. Boone to Boggs. Takes it to the bag himself. And that will be the ball game. The Red Sox beat the Angels six to two. And so Andy Hassler blow the save. Mike Witt, six innings, ten hits. A run it was earned. The solo shot to Boggs in the second, a walk and three strikeouts. Hassler was hassled. An inning, four hits, four runs, only the one earned on the air. A walk and a strikeout. He had good stuff, too, but he didn't show it. And Sanchez, an inning, three hits, a run. It was earned. 23 pitches. For the Red Sox, John Tudor, six and two-thirds innings of no decision baseball. Actually left the game on the wrong side of a 2-1 to one score. Eight hits, two runs, both there, and he walked three and struck out three. And then Bob Stanley goes to eight and three on the year. Two and a third innings and a strikeout. This, and he retired all seven men he faced. But our MVP is going to be Dwight Evans, who went four for five. Three singles, a double, and drove in two, including the big two and the seven. He's your MVP. The air, by the way, was Bob Boone, the catcher, which is pretty unusual. Angels strand seven. The Red Sox strand 11. Angels and Tigers, I think, on Tuesday. That's the next lunch game. I'm F9. Let's play the rest of Saturday, shall we? 
That 70s tournament National League final tomorrow. 73 Mets, 79 Pirates. We are family, 4 o'clock Eastern, 3 o'clock Central, right here on Retro Sports Network. Okay, scores from around the majors. The Yankees beat the Blue Jays 6 to 5. Dave Steve takes the loss. George Frazier gets the win. Dave Winfield, 28 dingers on the year. Montreal, 3, Houston, 1. Charlie Lee goes to 15 and 4. Al Oliver with his 15th of the year. San Francisco 8, Pittsburgh 1, Adelaide, Adelaide Hammaker 5 and 13 gets the win. Smith, Reggie Smith is 20th of the year. The Dodgers beat the Cubs 7 to 1. Jerry Royce goes to 17 and 7. Steve Sachs goes 3 and 4. Texas shuts out Baltimore 1 0. <gasps> Dave Schmidt goes to 5 and 3. Denny Martinez, El Presidente, 11 and 15. Philly beats the Reds 2 to 1. Mike Kruko goes to 14 and 9. Pastore takes a lot. Pastore goes to 9 and 5. The Braves shut out the Mets 11 0. Rick Camp, 8 and 5. Bob Horner with his 30th of the year. He drove in 6. Oakland beat Milwaukee 3 to 1. Langford with his 14th on the year. Chicago beat Kansas City 8 to 5. Britt Burns goes to 9 and 11. Harold Baines 5 for 5 with a 21st homer and drove in 3. Minnesota downs Cleveland 7 to 2 and Seattle stuns Detroit 6 to 4. Floyd Bannister goes to 14 and 7. He beat Dan Petrie and Paris 3 for 4 with a double. All right, here's your American League stats and stories. Baltimore's lead remains at a half a game. Their magic number is 35. Detroit, one back in the loss column. Milwaukee, two back. Toronto, nine and a half. In the West, status quo, I think. No, Colorado beat Kansas City. So five over KC and seven over the Shy Sox. You can see why California is so good. In the West, it's still Montreal by six and a half, Los Angeles by 16. Baseball tomorrow, that 70s tournament, chat, uh, the Mets and the Pirates at four. Chat with Al coming up in the next little bit on the Al Red Sox fan channel. He might do something after, you never know. I'm Ron Juckett for on a Saturday night. Thanks for watching. California, Detroit, Atlanta, Philadelphia, California, Milwaukee. Those are your three games next week from the replay. I'm Ron Juckett. Talk to you real soon. But for now, good night.